Paranormal Ghost Story Grandma Loves Me From The Other Side? I am a 25-year-old female, for the purpose of anonymity, I will refer to myself as Sabrina, I am from Romania, English is not my native language, but I shall try my best to make the story easy to be understood. My stories contain what you would call angels, spirits, demons, archangels, satanic people doing forbidden sessions of voodoo and everything, but for this particular story, I sort of believe, this is not necessarily a bad encounter, or so I lie to myself, sometimes. There are many stories that I would love to share with you, you can either decide to share them, I do not mind, but mainly I just wish to talk with someone who has went through what I did, and can understand and empathize with it based on your personal experiences. The one story that I can and will share with you for now I need time to think if I'm ready to share the less fortunate experiences for now. I live in Romania, our country has orthodox religion basically very similar to Christianity, we believe in God and Jesus Christ, with small certain similarities and differences, for example, id if it's the same as Catholics do. We keep the deceased for a night, we call it the sleeping duty or guard night, we do not take that body out of its house he or she has lived in for their entire life, in order to help the spirit find its way to heaven easier. The next two days, as we bury the bodies after three days, we take the body to the church where loved ones, but not relatives to the deceased may come and pay respects to that person, after this process concluded. We bury the body at the cemetery where the priest will chant prayers, helping the spirit of the deceased understand that he or she is no longer among the living, as Romanians are very spiritual people and believe in the afterlife, spirits and even in bad spirits that linger the world unable to move on. Understanding this is important as the story is pretty detailed itself, I had five grandparents, three grandmothers and two grandfathers, my first grandfather, we shall call him Michael, died when I was six years old due to a heart attack in August 2007. He raised me and his death marked my life ever since, because I could not grasp the significance of death, I would frequently dream about him, his messages, his signs, I would hear him in my dreams as he would guide me to be a good person, and so on, but even then, as a child, I knew what was a dream and what was reality, his wife, whom we shall call Anna, was my adoptive grandmother as my real by blood grandmother, named Margaret, has died when my mom was two years old due to an abortion, I'm not sure if she was trying to abort my mother or a third child. Since my mother has a brother and she was the second child during the communist years, 1946 to 1989, Romania had a strict law regarding abortions, and women would abort the fetuses on their own. In the privacy of their homes by themselves as no medics would agree to help with the procedure due to fear of being sentenced to life in prison, she died of septicemia, and my mother grew up without a mother until the age of six years old. Needless to say I never met her or knew anything about Margaret, my blood grandmother. But this story is about my grandmother, adoptive one, named Anna, she was a very spiritual, wise kind-hearted and intelligent woman, she never had children of her own, she adopted my mom and uncle, their names are not important for the story, my grandfather, Michael was only dating my grandmother, but after my mother had met her on a family visit on her side in Iasi, Moldova, it's a town in Romania, they got married soon after, my grandfather was a military general, and raising two children of six years and thirteen years was hard, how they decided to get married. Well, it was thanks to my mother because as soon as she first saw Grandma Anna, she went straight to her, at the age of six, raised her both arms up at her and asked, in a jolly child voice. Hi, my name is Christina, would you like to be my mommy? My grandmother burst in tears, picked her up and immediately created a connection with my mother whom she raised and loved as her own, it was not the same for my uncle as he was 13 at that time, and knew his own mother, Margaret had died and why. He denounced her and made her life much much harder, after raising my mom and uncle, my uncle had two children of her own, a boy and a girl, she raised the girl, and when the boy was born, she had a calcium crisis that made her faint and hit her head. She refused to raise my cousin afterwards as she was afraid she would drop holding the baby, my uncle never forgave her for that, and hated her even more, when I was born, I was the light of their life as she loved my mother from moment one, and my grandfather Michael adored my mother. 
Because I am a replica of my mother, same eyes, same face, same body shape, they immediately took me in and raised me as my father worked in three different jobs, and my mom was a pediatric nurse and worked in shifts, I loved growing up with her, like I said, she was an extremely spiritual person. She loved to meditate, she would tell me about her dreams, she taught me how to decode them and what it meant. She told me about ghost encounters she had in her life, and always told me not to fear any spirit that comes close to me in my life, because ghosts see us as beams of light guiding them to God when they are confused, yes, that was my grandmother Anna for you, she did this until I was 18 yo. We were very close, and I was living 5 minutes away from her so I would visit her daily, sometimes still sleep at her place. Her hobby was to read the future and some cards she had owned, not tarot cards, but normal cards with some inscriptions she had such as encounter with mysterious man, beware, crying child, careful, dangerous woman, I can give you photos of the pack. It's just that the words are in Romanian, but I can translate them for you if you wish, also, I would have to go to my parents' house since I have moved from there, and the cards deck remained there. On the new year morning of 2017, at 3.15 am, I called my grandma Anna to wish her a happy new year, and to let her know how much I and my family loved her and appreciated her, I had liked to mention that Romanians rarely express their love by saying, I love you to our mothers, fathers, grandparents, we consider that you show your love by what you do in your life, and how you respect them, rather than just say the words, but that night, for the first time in 23 years, at that time, in 2017, I felt the need to tell her that, I still do not know why, her voice changed. You could hear her chuckle in soft happy tears as she would hear that, and said she loves us all back and forever will, nothing seemed suspicious as I am a very sensitive and emotional woman myself, so the night went on normally, she was at a party, I was with my fiancé's house. The next day, 1 January 2017 at 17.30pm, I receive a phone call from my father, who told me that grandma Anna had died the previous night, I could not express in words how my heart simply left my body, as if my own existence stopped, refusing to acknowledge that she was dead, I rushed home. The police was there, the ambulance was there, they say she died of a heart attack due to the climate change, same as my grandfather Michael did 11 years before her by the same cause, outside it was cold, inside the house it was too hot, and as she was rushing to change her clothes. Her heart could not handle the temperature change, her body could not balance the heat, it and she died. But what I found particularly weird is the Todd, time of death, I still had her last phone call, 3.15 am, the policemen and ambulance staff analyzed her and declared her Todd was around midnight. They said there was no way I could have talked to her at 3.15 am, as for by that time, the body would have already began the rigor mortis stage, who did I talk to? Because it was her phone number, it was her voice, and she seemed incredibly fine, call it a sick joke or just medical staff Todd error, creepy. During her funeral, I decided to write her a goodbye letter as I am very spiritual, and even though no one will read it, I like to consider she took the message I had for her in heaven, to pass it down to my other grandmother, Margaret and two grandfathers, Michael and Peter. I wrote in that letter that I do love her a lot, that I thank her for every sacrifice she has done for me, and that I wish to tell Margaret, the real grandmother which I have never met because she died from an abortion long before I was born, that I love her too, although I have never met her. I put that letter in my grandmother's coffin, kissed her forehead and watched her go on her last road, my mom knows about the letter, she yet has asked me about what I wrote in it. After her funeral, I get a phone call from my grandmother, yes, my nana Anna. At first I thought it was my father as he would still use her phone to let all our relatives from other countries that she has died, so normally, I answer the phone, and I hear something unimaginable, impossible. Formidable, I hear my nana Anna, I hear her voice clearly, I hear her laughly voice, with intermittence and static occurring whenever she would pause, it was a soft, fading voice, but nothing scary, nothing fearful or intimidating, it made me feel like she was indeed there. But I will admit the whole situation did freak me out, she said to me. 
Hello dear, I called to let you know I passed a message and I love you too, I could not reply, as the phone call hung up right after, it left me feel so vulnerable as I thought maybe someone is playing a sick joke. But it could not be that, I saw my nana be buried myself, I saw the coffin be sealed, I saw the letter exist inside the coffin until the very last second, no one took it out to read it, she had three sisters, but they were all dead, and none of them had her voice. No one could have repeated her voice that perfectly. But the even scarier part comes after that first phone call, after another week, I remember it was during another day of Monday, right one week after the first phone call, my phone starts ringing again under the same number, I answer. Already have forgotten about what has happened and I hear an old lady, a voice I could not feel familiar, I did not know who that lady was, it was a pretty soft but strong voice, it felt like a relatively young woman, but an experienced, I would say around 30 to 40 years or so. I would like to mention that this time I was in the same room with my father, who owned her phone still, and I received the call, her phone is in front of me on the table and not ringing, I open her phone as I speak on my phone, her phone had no battery, and it was dead closed. But I still get her phone call, I answer, I hear this weird lady, and she goes like this. Hello sweetheart, you do not know me, but I do, I received you message and I love you too, then the phone call hangs up again. Needless to say I started screaming and panicking so hard that my dad immediately went to the telephone service to find out who is playing pranks on us, they went through her profile, numbers dialed and received, my number was not in her agenda of calls, so we decided to disable her number. Ever since then we do not receive calls anymore, but I do go to the cemetery more often and talk to them, this year is the first year from her death, so we are sort of celebrating her memory. But for me, personally, I do not celebrate her memory as I feel she is constantly physically with me, I often have dreams of her, she would often visit me at nights, I'm saying dreams because I feel like I am going insane, if I ever conclude on these situations being something other than dreams. I guess I am trying to thank you for giving me the possibility to share this with you, if you want to share my story further, to all the people out there who encounter ghosts or paranormal activity, I am going to say what my grandmother Anna taught me all my life. Do not be afraid of them as they are just confused lost souls, who see you as beams of light helping them to find God, the way you feel about them, will conclude in the way they react, and afterwards end up scaring you. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed the video hit that like button to support my work. And as always enjoy the fear my dear.